guys, gals, gays, and theys, it's Omnia, and unfortunately, bridges are being burned today. My credibility in the art community will inevitably fall to pieces. Today, we're discussing my unpopular art opinions. But first, before I begin, I'm extremely excited to tell you about today's sponsor. Raid Shadow Legends. Just kidding, joke's on you for thinking I'm dumb enough to accept a sponsor from them. Besides, I'm not YouTube famous enough to have sponsors. I'm still technically considered lame in the grand scheme of things, but who really cares? I have really exciting news regardless. One of my very cool subscribers named Bobby Rizzo reached out to me on Twitter recently and actually offered to draw some stills for me to use in future videos, which is so amazing and cool and crazy. Like, can we all appreciate these for a second? They're gorgeous. I love them so much. I'm so excited to use them. I'll link their Twitter down below. Please give them a follow. They're severely underrated. I'm legitimately so happy. Oh my gosh. Okay, enough of my screeching. Let's get on with the video. The first unpopular art opinion is inspired by all the comments I get asking me why I don't have a consistent art style. This may be a hot take, but whoever came up with the idea that you need to have a consistent art style to be credible or for people to take you seriously thought dumbly. Yes, dumbly is a word. I googled it. Like, I get that someone may think it's a brand thing or you need to have one style and that's your style and your brand and people are reminded of your art when they see something similar or inspired by that style. But, I don't know you guys, I just see that as limiting yourself. I take inspiration from a lot of artists, some that draw completely different from others, and that kind of explains why I rarely have a consistent art style. Sure, I guess it's nice to have that in your pocket to use whenever, but it's definitely not necessary. You don't need a consistent art style. Just do whatever floats your boat whenever it suits you, and you'll be fine. The second unpopular art opinion I have is... You don't need fancy equipment or an expensive art program in order to make some quality art. I get the appeal, I get the idea, but trust me, the art programs I've used in my life, which has consisted of Art Rage, Autodesk Sketchbook, and Psy, have all been free. Every single one of them. Well, technically not Psy, but <clears throat> uh, you can always <coughs> pirate it, but you know, I'm not promoting anything. I've never had Adobe Photoshop, I never had Clip Studio Paint, and you don't need a fancy tablet or computer either. I used to use the cheapest Wacom Intuos, which was $80 when I bought it, and don't get me wrong, that's not really cheap, but I really wanted it, so I scraped all the money my 13-year-old self could find and got it. Trust me when I tell you this, you don't need a Cintiq Pro, you don't need to buy a monthly subscription to Photoshop, you don't even need to do digital art if digital art is out of your budget. All you really need is a paper a pencil and some passion. The rest will pretty much follow. I've seen some really gorgeous traditional artwork made with literally just a paper and a pencil and that's deadass all you need. Fancy equipment is overrated. The third unpopular art opinion is the idea of the quote-unquote industry. I just hate it. That's all I have to say about that, honestly. Like, just the idea of it seems so stupid and unreal and the easiest way to drive artists away from doing what they actually like to do and instead feel the need to build a portfolio or make art just appeal to an employer or whatever. That's kind of how I felt when I was filling out college applications. I added an art portfolio to prove that I actually do things with my time rather than just stare at a wall all day and it honestly just felt really odd to me. I remember feeling really insecure about my art because admission officers were going to look at it and judge it as something actually worth the time I poured into it, and honestly, that just felt really bad. I think we should make art that we like and art that appeals to us. Don't really worry about external validation or judgmental eyes on your work. Do what you like. This kind of leads me to my fourth unpopular art opinion, but there's a difference between wanting to be a professional artist, a side hustle artist, and a hobbyist artist, and there are different levels of each. It's so weird to me how some professional artists feel so triggered by hobbyist artists if they don't have perfect art. They go all out with the critiques and the passive aggressive, where are her organ comments like, you may hate to hear this, but some people just make art because they enjoy it and are having fun, not really because they're trying to improve in any capacity. Like, ooh, art, fun, not 
Ooh, art must work to constantly improve and be better in order to monetize this skill. I have nothing against critiques or wanting to monetize your art skills, obviously, but I think it's also important to keep in mind that context matters, and not all people are interested in actually being really good at art, and that's okay. <laughs> Sometimes people just like to draw to draw, not to be paid or to begin commissions. I don't think that's invalid either. We all do things for ourselves in varying capacities. Some artists make art just because they like to do it. Their female torso anatomy doesn't have to be rendered to perfection, Cassandra. Chill the fuck out. The fifth unpopular art opinion is... Oh my gosh, I know some people are gonna come for me in the comments for this one, but... The anime art style is a valid art style. Hear me out, just wait, <laughs> please. I get it, some people hate weeb art, whatever, but I think drawing in an anime art style is such a good stepping stone to exploring other styles or even just practicing anatomy and hair. Like, there's literally nothing wrong with weeb art, you guys. I used to make a ton of weeb art. Anime was actually one of the main reasons why I stuck with art when I was a cringy middle schooler. I still make weeb art occasionally. Anime art styles are so valid, and if you heavily rely on an anime art style, I just want to let you know that you're great. Keep it up. Don't feel discouraged because other people are saying anime styles suck. There's a huge audience who loves anime and anime fan art. You just have to find your people and I'm rooting for you. Sixth unpopular art opinion. You guys, proportions are overrated. Come for me in the comments, I don't really care, but some of you just cannot stop talking about anatomy this and anatomy that. Like I get it, the human body, wow, human physiology, organs, bodily functions, crazy stuff, but hey, I don't hear anyone yelling at the person who created the Monopoly Man saying, What the heck, bro? Your anatomy stinks. So, I don't understand why people feel the need to bash on artists who clearly have a very stylized way of drawing things. Like, extremely stylized. Steven Universe level stylized. I don't hear anyone yelling about where Pearl's organs are, and she's literally the definition of a string bean. Sis is the skinniest legend out there, and the style allows for that. Understand? In the context of the art before going all oh my god anatomy 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 <sighs> i'm getting way too involved i'm too pissed i need to calm down anatomy is only relevant to those who actually want to draw human bodies true to life in some capacity besides this is art for fuck's sake not all of us are trying to imitate life to the t the seventh unpopular art opinion I'm so sorry, I keep interrupting my own self, but like, I already feel that people are either going to really hate me or really agree with me on most of all of these, and it's honestly stressing me out. But whatever, these are all just my opinions. Anyways, the seventh unpopular art opinion is, your art style is great, the brushes you use are great, but being so up your own ass about it is really annoying. Like, for example, I like your textured brush, and I ask you what brush you use, or what pack it's from, or even just, you know, like, this could apply to so many things in life, but with art specifically, if a person asks you what brush you use, or what program you use, or how you learned how to do line art, or tips, or advice on something art-related that you do, it feels a little scummy to me for someone to be like, none of your business, or just act above the person asking, I guess. I've had this happen to me before, and it's such a bad experience experience every single time. Like, I admire your work, I think it's great, but being overly possessive of which brushes you use or where you learned how to do something seems very pretentious to me. I remember talking to someone about this in the comment section, but I used the example of clothing. Like, if you ask a friend, oh my gosh, your overalls are so cute, where'd you get them? I'm asking because I love your overalls and they're super dope, not because I'm trying to steal your look or come for your brand. Come on, you guys. Like, it's okay to be possessive of your art making resources, but god damn, trust me, it's really not that deep. The eighth unpopular art opinion is, once again, I'm bracing myself for an attack because every time I talk about race, you all seem to get very bothered, but I digress. Art history is extremely exclusionary, often only focusing on European art standards, and I don't think that's a thing we should celebrate. Sure, we love to see Monet. We love to see Van Gogh, 
But what about everyone else who made art and wasn't white? Seems like their narratives have been kind of wiped from existence, right? That and the bias we have towards white art being deemed as high or quality art, but like, you know, African art is deemed primitive and elementary. I'm thinking about making a whole video about it, honestly, but a large part of the quote unquote art world has always been very anti-black and to exclude black indigenous and poc narratives in art making both historically and now is very very wrong the ninth unpopular art opinion is art is a skill and not a talent. Some people are predisposed to art, meaning it's easier for them to grasp concepts, ideas, or thoughts. Like, maybe you're just really well versed in color theory, shadows, and lighting, and you know exactly how to do it just right. Or maybe someone can do line art exquisitely and has great, clean, confident lines right off the bat. But in the end, I still think art is just like any skill. Cooking, carpentry, language learning, there are people who are naturals and can pick it up easily, but there is still a great deal of work that goes into it. I also wholeheartedly believe that a person who practices more and pours more time into their art will be more skilled than the person who is a quote unquote natural or finds art easy to master. In my mind, hard work will always outshine predisposition or what most people like to call it talent. I also thought it was relevant to add, I personally don't really care for the compliment, quote, you're so talented, end quote, when you're admiring my work, but do realize that some people really don't appreciate that compliment because you're insinuating that the hours they've spent practicing these skills are being chalked up to predisposition when that couldn't be farther from the truth. I'd advise saying something else, like, wow, you're so incredibly skilled, or this is so impressive, how did you learn how to do X? You know? There's ways around the talented comment where you can still positively reinforce the work an artist does. The tenth and last unpopular art opinion is a jab at the art community for good measure, and that is, just because someone draws a particular body part really well or often draws a particular body type doesn't mean they have a kink for it. Like, I'm so sorry Cynthia drew a curvaceous girl, but that doesn't mean that she's into hentai, Becky. Oh my god, did you just say someone drew big boobs? Get the tasers and the handcuffs, they're clearly over-sexualizing women. Their internalized misogyny is showing. Honestly y'all, sometimes you jump to conclusions way too quickly. Hate to break it to you. But girls with big titties, yeah, they're real. I know you think they're over-sexualizing their own damn selves for just existing, and that's upsetting you and your homegirls because you feel like, well damn, if you can't have flat-chested women, what the hell else could you have? But trust me, 9 times out of 10, girls with big titties are just girls with big titties. No unnecessary sexualization needed. Please get over it. You're making it weird for absolutely everyone for absolutely no reason. Anyways, that's all from me. No, I will not be accepting questions for any of these at this time. Yes, I will consider a part two because this was honestly really fun to make and chaos gives me the will to live. As always, the biggest thank you ever goes out to my patrons, especially Holographics for all their tremendous help. Again, please go ahead and follow Bobby Rizzo because I love their stills so much. You know the drill, comment down below all of your unpopular art opinions, like and subscribe if you enjoyed what you just watched, and I'll catch you next time. Bye!